Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? Welcome to the world famous Salvation Saloon Water and Hole Church. We are so blessed to have you all here to worship God with us today. My name is Mild Bill, and uh, thanks so much for joining us today. And as I mentioned last week, today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And here at Salvation Saloon, we actually we love all of our women here. We are blessed to have each and every one of you. So mother, sister, daughter, aunt, niece, we love all of our Saluna chicks here at the church, and we are blessed so very much for all of you. Thank you so much for everything you do. And I will like to take a, a special moment to say thank you, Mom. I love you. I know that I give you a lot of grief. And, uh, you know, I may not have always been the easiest child to live with. I know a lot of you are going to find that very hard to believe. And when I say I was raised poorly, that's not true. I can't blame my mother for the way I behave or for the bad jokes. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to move on with the service this morning. And uh, we are just, again, blessed to have all of you here. Thank you so very much. We love you. And so let's take it to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for all the ladies in our lives. And uh, thank you so much for moms, because where would we be without our mothers? And I just pray that every mother in this, within the sound of my voice is blessed today and know that they are loved and that we are so very thankful for them. And I just pray, Lord, that you bless everybody that's hearing this message today. I hope that there are hearts that are opened and that you fill them with the Holy Spirit because there's no greater love than the love that you showed us, Jesus Christ, when you died for us. When you took our sins on that cross, and when you were raised from the dead, we have hope because of that sacrifice, because you loved us. So thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done for us and everything that you're going to do for us. And I'm thankful that we have the opportunity and the blessing to be here to praise your mighty name together as brothers and sisters in Christ. So thank you for blessing this service as we continue today and bless all of my brothers and sisters in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you. And because it is Mother's Day, we do have some pictures. Thank you all for everybody who sent in the pictures of uh, either you or your mother or you and your children. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you all. We love you. And let's take a look at some Mother's Day pictures. All right. Well, that was interesting. Uh, anyways, happy Mother's Day to all our moms. And first, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to thank Mild uh, Bill uh, for his Mother Day's reminder uh, last week. Because without thinking, I had a uh, plan to uh, just continue on for the Timothy study. Uh, but with our study last week, uh, that was one that really kind of uh, picked on you ladies. Well, how appropriate is it for me to redeem myself today by delivering a special Mother's Day message? A message um, that comes from the Word of God that is going to bring honor and uh, godly respect to our women. Uh, because despite the lack of honor in, and respect that last week's uh, message seemed to send, well, we know that is not uh, biblically the case. Uh, because throughout the whole Bible, I mean, there's just so many examples of God choosing and calling some very faithful women to uh, fulfill His will. And just to name a few, uh, in, in the Old Testament there was uh, Rahab. Okay, the Rahab uh, who was like a godly undercover secret agent 
uh, within those walls of Jericho. And uh, how about uh, my personal favorite, which would be Esther, uh, who by the very providence of God, she saved the entire Jewish nation from uh, being completely annihilated. Uh, in the New Testament, uh, of course, we have Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, our Savior, uh, who is no doubt um, the most honored woman in, in all of history. Uh, there was also Mary Magdalene, who Jesus chose to confirm his resurrection to first, and uh, then he uh, actually commissioned her with the task uh, to pass it on to his poor, uh, scared, and, and confused disciples. Um, also, how about Priscilla, right, who Paul uh, praised for risking her life for him. Uh, and actually, I don't know if you guys knew this, but she was even listed within some of the uh, traditional manuscripts as being one of the original uh, 70 disciples. Now, as for her uh, knowledge of the Bible, uh, well, it was uh, she, along with her husband, who uh, actually taught the gospel in a, a more accurate way to uh, the Apostle Apollos. And so um, she instructed uh, apostles. Um, she was a person that actually instructed apostles. Uh, and then, uh, it was in Romans chapter 16 uh, that we saw uh, Paul actually praise a whole list of women who he affirmed to be his co-workers in ministry. And uh, so again, as it states in Galatians 3.28, in God's eyes, there is no difference between male and female, but all are one and all are the same in Christ Jesus. And uh, today, well, I hope to elaborate on that even more. Now, again, uh, I think we understand that we do, uh, do have uh, our different roles and, and different character traits. And, and again, that was by God's design, right? But those differences, well, those differences is what allowed our, allows our God to use our women to do certain things that, I mean, us men just can't do. And, and speaking uh, today of motherhood, um, man, where would, where would most of us be if not for all the special things and, and the godly things that our mothers had, had taught us and instilled in us? And, and to touch on the, uh, the value of that, um, well, it was Abraham Lincoln himself, uh, in all his wisdom, who actually said this. Abraham Lincoln said, no one is poor who has a godly mother. No one is poor who has a godly mother. Now, I know there's a lot of us here who once made a choice to do things our own way, and, and it, it all ended up in, in, in just a big mess. But I also know that for a lot of us, there was a godly mother or, or wife or lady that then pointed us to the God who then restored our lives. Right? And, and if it wasn't that, then it was likely their constant prayers for us that brought about that restoration. And, and once again, um, that is something that Abraham Lincoln uh, recognized uh, when he also said this. This is actually a great quote. Uh, Abraham Lincoln also said this. He said, I, I remember my mother's prayers, and they have always followed me, and they have clung to me all my life. Well, uh, I, I don't know what it is, uh, but there is... Uh, just nothing, right, that is more powerful than the prayers of a, a godly woman. And um, if, if I had time, I've got so many examples I could uh, uh, share with you uh, in reference to that. Um, but to share just one, uh, one that actually came from here at the saloon, and actually it came from uh, one of those little yellow comment cards. Uh, but this is what it said. It said, Saloon, thank you for God's salvation. God heard my prayers for my son, and he has now found Jesus. He was messing his life up and got into trouble with the law. I knew I had to do something huge to save him, so I sent him away. I tried everything else, but it was Jesus who gave me the answer. And I sent him to a Christian ranch, and after 10 months, he now loves Jesus the way I do. Oh man, what a, a, a great testimony that is, right? A, a testimony that describes the power uh, of, of a mother's prayer. Now, as uh, far as being a, a godly mother or a godly lady, well, I know that that is a, a, pri a priority for uh, many of our ladies here at the saloon. 
But I also know that for most uh, women in our world today, um, there is very little interest, uh, I, I would say, in following the biblical pattern of womanhood. Because instead, uh, today, women have bought into the belief that their worth is actually found in their independence. And, and since the world has taken on a much different culture, and we talked about this uh, a little last week, uh, well, because of that, I, I mean, I do not deny that being independently stronger is certainly a necessity. But it is still my belief that their strength should come from the Lord. Their strength should come from the Lord. And today, well, I'd like to look at what uh, Scripture uh, actually has to say about that. And so uh, let, let's start this morning by uh, first asking this question. And that is, what is a godly woman? What is a godly woman? Well, in verse 10 of Proverbs uh, chapter 31, it tells us this. Uh, it says, a wife of noble or godly character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. So according to the word of God, to find a, a godly woman in, in, in our lives, to, uh, uh, to find and have a godly woman in, in our lives, well, it is of greater value than any riches that we could ever possess on this earth. Right? So just as old Abe said, Again, right, no one is poor who has a godly mother. Uh, and, and for those of us who have a godly uh, woman in our lives, well, I'm thinking we may very well take them for granted. I know I do. And, and so today, um, what I hope to do is I hope that um, this serves as a reality check for, uh, for, us, women, uh, for us men. Um, and hopefully that will be the case. Um, but for those of you who may be out there that do not have a godly woman in your life, well, man, I just got to think that finding one, it, it should be a priority. Because a godly woman in our lives, it is made to complete us. Now, th that, that's from God, not me, all right? That's from the God who said in his word that it is not good that man should be alone. And for this cause, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And again, there's a reason for that. Right? There's a reason for that because alone, men lack certain qualities that God gave to women, and alone, women lack certain qualities that God gave to men. But it's by God's design that together, then we are made complete. Well, right now, as we... Uh, start to uh, uh, continue and, and uh, look at these verses in Proverbs. Um, let's, let's first kind of break this uh, first verse down, verse 10. And um, looking at that word noble, um, that word is actually, uh, it is literally translated um, as strength or power. And, and that's why in, in some uh, Bible versions it actually says virtuous. Um, but that is not talking about physical strength but it's talking about moral strength. And, man, that is something we see in our moms, right? We, we see that in our moms because our, our moms just naturally teach their children right from wrong. And, and that is something that never leaves them because then, as uh, I think a lot of us know, they then try to teach their husbands the same thing. And, uh, again, I think us guys, uh, a lot of us can relate to that. Um, now, we make all that nagging, um, but really, in the big picture, man, we all need that moral standard in, in view to guide us. We all need that uh, moral standard in view to, to, to guide us. And so, to have a little reminder now and then, uh, again, in the big picture, um, that, it, that is a good thing. Now, in verse 11, we're told this about godly women. Uh, it says, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Well, what that's saying is, again, a godly woman is, is a trustworthy woman, right? And when there is uh, trust in a marriage, then you know what? That marriage is going to thrive, right? Because that trust and loyalty, that is a, a godly character trait, right? As seen in Numbers uh, chapter 23, which says this. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind, does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? 
Well, we know the answer to that. The answer to that is no, right? We can always have confidence in God. And we can also have confidence in a godly woman. Now, if that trust is not there, then that godly woman, she needs to create that in, in her relationship. But also, if it's not there, well, you know what? It, it could very well be that us men have not been doing our part. And that is to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Right? And, and Jesus, Jesus died for his church. He died for his church. And so, um, man, that, that's a heavy calling. But you know what? A woman needs that. Right? A woman needs the security of her husband's love. And, and knowing that is why God has given us men that, that command. But here's the thing. It's worth it, guys. It's worth it. Because a godly woman's response to that love, we talked about that last, uh, last week, a godly woman's response to that love, it is going to result in this in verse 12. As it says, she'll bring him good, not harm, all the days of her life. And we can count on that. Right? We can count on that because a godly woman lives to serve her husband and her family because that is a, a, a desire that God has, has given to her. Now, as we continue on here in, in Proverbs, uh, what we need to uh, realize is that, uh, again, this was written when the world was a much uh, different place. And, uh, um, you know, as far as the, the men were concerned, the men were, you know, out in the fields all day, tending the crops, they, they were out hunting and, and killing their food, and, and the wives took care of the household, right? They cleaned and, and cooked and, you know, raised the children and, and you know, a thousand other uh, uh, duties uh, along with that. So uh, some of this that we're going to be looking at, I mean, it may seem like we're not able to relate to it, um, but I think we, we can still make it relative, uh, relevant. Uh, like in verse 13, where it says this. Uh, verse 13 says, She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. Well, what that's saying is, is basically, it's saying that women, man, they just love to stay busy doing things for their family, right? Such as this in verse 14. Uh, she is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. Well, you know what that means? It means she likes to shop, right? That's something that God also uh, built into our women. Now, uh, obviously, we know if a woman is not disciplined, well, that could be a, a problem. Uh, but for me, man, it's a great thing, right? Because God did not give me that desire, right? I cannot stand uh, shopping, right? It is a fate worse than death to me. And so, as far as I'm concerned, um, praise the Lord and have at it, ladies. Uh, and then in verse 15, it says uh, this about a godly woman. It says, she gets up while it is still dark and provides food for her family and uh, portions for her servant girls. Portions for her servant girls. Now, um, what that is saying is, is, is kind of interesting because the godly woman in this, uh, that this proverb describes, she actually has servants helping her. So I want you just to think about that because um, that would make our godly women um, so much more godly because they do it all themselves, right? And not only do they do it themselves, but in a society, uh, the society that we live in today, man, they're probably also working a, a regular job. And so our ladies are, are most likely doing double duty, which means that never in the history of man has their lives been so demanding. And, and I think it's important for us guys to, to recognize that and uh, maybe lend a hand uh, now and then. Uh, and then in verse 16, it says this. It says, She considers a field and buys it, and out of her earnings she plants a vineyard. Well, what that says is that women are industrious, and, and, and they're creative. Let, let me give you this example, all right? Men's Bible study next Wednesday. Well, you know what, guys? That's probably all you're going to get from us, right? But you women... Well, you know, you're, you're also, you're, you're, it's going to start out with some cute little invitations, 
right? They, it, there's going to be some cute little workbooks. There's going to be uh, gifts all along the way. And, and most likely it is all going to end with, with some sort of a party. Because again, there is just so much planning and, and creativity in, in everything that a woman does. Right? Just as it says in verse 17, it says, uh, She sets about her work vigorously, and her arms are strong for her task. Uh, in verse 18, she sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. Lamp does not go out at night because their minds just never stop. And, and this is something that I know because I see it every day. Because with Sue, I, I mean, those wheels are just, I, I just, they just never stop turning, right? They just never stop turning. So I, I uh, recognize that uh, in, in my own life. In verse 19, it says, her hand, uh, in her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. Um, women are tireless. I mean, they're, they're like superheroes, right? I, I mean, seriously, I get all worn out just thinking about all that Sue does for our family and, and all she does for this church and, and for others as well. Just as it now says in uh, verse 20, it says she opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Well, bottom line with this, you know what? There is just something uh, about the compassion uh, of a woman. And, and let's face it, guys, it, it is beyond our compassion. But God gave them that. God gave them that so that they would be more sensitive and, and caring, which is what they need to nurture their families. Now, I, I like to use the example of hunting, and this, this is possibly something that you guys have heard before, but uh, most women, okay, they don't want to go out and kill little Bambi, right? Because little Bambi, I mean, is just so cute and, and innocent. But on the flip side, right, us men, I mean, we want to blow Bambi's freaking head off, right? And, and then what we want to do with that head is we want to stick it on the wall. And, and why would we want to do that? Well, because we're men. We're men that, that have been created to be providers, and it is that head on the wall that serves as the trophy of our manhood. And, and so we throw it up there, and we, we you know, stare at it, we pat ourselves on, on the back, and uh, we just get that warm and, and fuzzy feeling inside. We get so proud. But women, again, are generally more compassionate and, and giving. And, and here, uh, Ashley's a more practical I example. Um, Dr. Sally. Dr. Sally, who uh, I think most of us know, she runs a, uh, a medical practice. But she provides more medical charity than anyone I have ever known. And, and to the point where it affects her own financial success. Right? But she does it just the same because she has the compassion of a godly woman. Um, I mean, she even takes her, her patients into her own home, and, and we know that. Right? She puts a, a roof over their heads, and she, she feeds them. And uh, basically, Sally is, uh, you know, is running a medical homeless shelter, and has been for years, because she's a godly woman. And in verse 21, it says this. It says, when it snows, or uh, for us, like when, when there's a tropical storm coming, well, it says that uh, when that takes place, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in, in scarlet. And, and continuing in verse uh, 22, she makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Well, here's the thing. A godly woman prepares for the worst with the very best. A godly woman prepares for the worst with the very best. And, and that is something that keeps her family encouraged through all the storms of, of life. And, and because of all her unselfish efforts, in verse 23, uh, tells us this, tells us that her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes a seat among the elders of the land. Now, for all of you out there who know my wife and know all the things that she does and, and how she caters to my every need, Oh man, I, I, know that, I know that is something that anyone would be envious of. And, and so again, if you do not ha have a godly wife, 
then man, I would encourage you to, to, to get out there and find one. Because that godly woman is going to make your life just so much better. Right? Because again, as the Bible says, man was not meant to be alone. Um, although with the exception of maybe Dave George. Uh, verse 24 says this. says, She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. Well, when I read this verse, that, that reminds me of Barb. Barb Griffiths, right, who uh, most of us know. Uh, she's been a, a single mom who has, has struggled to raise her uh, three girls on her own. Yet, through the years, man, I have seen her do whatever she had to do to always provide the very best for those girls. And, and I believe those girls have now come to realize just how blessed um, they've always been. Uh, just like uh, uh, many of us, when we look back, um, I think we also recognize the sacrifices that our, our mothers made. Uh, and that's why in verse 25, it says this. It says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She is clothed with strength and, dig and, and dignity. And, and may I just uh, add this. You know, we are talking about the strength and dignity that comes from the Lord and not the feminist movement, right? And, and that's why she can laugh and even rejoice at the days to come because a godly woman is a woman of faith. And she knows that her God will be faithful to her and her family. And, and so in verse 26, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Okay, the faithful instruction that comes from the word of God. Right? And she lives her life uh, according to that word and she teaches her family to do the same. And it's that godly wisdom and that uh, faithful word of God that in verse 27, it says this. It says, it says that she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Because her priority is her family. Her priority is her family and she will do whatever is necessary to sustain it. Right? Even when things look hopeless to others. Because a godly woman knows that nothing is impossible with God. And so a godly woman walks uh, by faith and not by sight. And considering all these things, in verse 28, it tells us this. It tells us that uh, because of all those things, her children will arise and they will call her blessed. And her husband uh, uh, will do so also. And he will praise her. And, and again, I say, I, I think that um, we take our mothers and, and our wives for granted. But when uh, we take time to reflect and consider all the, the things that they do, man, I think we all come to the same conclusion. And that is, our lives have truly been blessed because of them. And, and here's a summary of all this right now in verse 29 as it says this. It says, Many women do noble things. Many women do noble things. But you, okay, talking about the godly woman, will you surpass them all? Okay, again, all women have that uh, loving and nurturing desire for their, their families, and, and they all right, deserve recognition for it. But a godly woman, a godly woman well, she surpasses them all because not only do they have these desires for the sake of their families, but they also have an even greater desire because a godly woman seeks to be obedient to God. And that's why she's always going above and beyond, always going that extra mile. And so as it says in verse 30, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. But, I have to say this, I have to say that as far as all you ch Saluna chicks go, man, you, you ladies got it all going on, right? You uh, both, you have both the, the inside beauty and the outside beauty, and, and I mean that. And, and now in verse 31, with Mother's Day in mind, we close with this. Um, as it says, 
uh, let us give the women in our lives the reward they've earned and let their works bring them praise at the city gates. Again, listen to this, guys. Give the women in your lives the reward they've earned and let their works bring them praise at the city gates. Well, thank you, ladies, for who you are and for all that you do. And please forgive us for, uh, for us when, when we often take all those things for granted. But today, I pray that, that all of you are going to have a special day and a blessed day because you are uh, more than deserving. You ladies are more than deserving. And uh, again, today we just thank God for all of you. Um, I love you guys, and uh, here's Bill to share his closing thoughts. Hey, everybody. That was a great message. Um, I, of course, want to wish all our moms a happy Mother's Day. Um, and I just want you guys to kind of be mindful, if you could. Um, there's a lot of folks that are kind of, it's going to be different this year, right? We're not going to be able to gather like we normally do. For some of us, we're facing our first Mother's Day without our moms. Uh, if you know somebody in that position, maybe give them a call, reach out to them, just encourage them, love them. Um, and I want to just share this. Paul mentioned it over and over again, that the power of a mother's prayers there's nothing equal to that. And I stand here as living proof that I would not be here had it not been that my mother wore her knees out praying for her stupid son, right? That someday I would come to know Jesus Christ as she did. And thank God that happened and we had the last 10 years uh, to serve God together. And what a blessing that was. But there is nothing more powerful than a mother's prayer. So if you're a mother right now that has a child that's not doing right, don't give up. God is alive and well, cares about what happens here on earth, and he's still the same as he was yesterday, today, and forever. He is still in the miracle business. And what God was willing to do for me, he's willing to do for all. So be encouraged. Give it to God. Never give up. Pray, pray, pray. And if you're one of those wayward ones that needs to get your act together, you know, needs to give your life to Christ, there's no better day to do it than on Mother's Day so that you could go ahead and honor your mom with something like that. So to start over, to have a great relationship with Jesus Christ, to be all that you're supposed to be, starts with a really simple prayer and a humble heart. And you could say something like this. Say, Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, but I believe in you. So I accept your love by accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me. Make all things new. And from this point on, I want to serve you all the days of my life by the power of your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. A really simple prayer that has enormous potential to change you forever and to change your relationship with God the Father, with Jesus his Son, and with your family. And of course, our family here at the church. We love you. We're thinking of you today. We hope that you can have the best Mother's Day possible, but we just can't wait to be with you again in person. We're getting better at the TV stuff, right? We got scriptures up and we're working it out and we're learning more, but you know that we're technically, you know, I mean, for God's sakes, Paul had a flip phone until two months ago, right? So we're, we're doing what we can, but we appreciate your patience. And I thank you so much for all of you that got the message last week and understood about the confusion some emails were causing and that's all stopped and you guys are always wonderful to help us with those things to keep things simple and we're learning as we go and we're upgrading equipment as we need to in fact you know just remember that you know the camera adds about 10 pounds and I've got nine cameras on me right now so that's why I look so large but anyway just kidding we love you we can't wait to see you be blessed today. Be a blessing to someone else. 
Be mindful of those that are in your circle somewhere that might be having a hard time. Just let them know that you love them, that God loves them, and that we, of course, here at the Salvation Saloon love them. And we'd love to serve them when God gives us the opportunity to be in person again. So be blessed, and we'll see you soon. Let me pray for us real quick. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for the women in our lives. Lord, we thank you for our moms, for those of us that were blessed to have a godly mom. And we thank you, Lord, that you understand for all the folks that didn't have that, that weren't blessed, that didn't have a good relationship with their mom for whatever reason, could their mom just couldn't be what they were supposed to be. And that can leave a lifetime of ache and heartache. But God, you fix all of that, Lord. You adopt them and you become all that they need to be by being our Father. Father, we love you and we thank you so much that you sent Jesus to restore our relationship with you so that you could be the greatest parent there ever was. So for those that are hurting God, those that missed out on some things, Lord, we know that you promised to always restore what the locusts have taken. And we know that you don't lie, Lord, you keep your word. So we just thank you for the blessings that you have for all of us, no matter how we got where we're at. So Father, be with our people. Lord, protect our first responders and all the medical staff and all those that are putting themselves in harm's way to protect us. Help our leaders make godly decisions that benefit us and honor you. And we thank you that you are alive and well and that you care what happens here on planet Earth for us, your children. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you soon. Happy Mother's Day.